This may be the biggest challenge so far of the seven months of Joe Biden's presidency, how to keep that commitment to Americans and Afghan allies who want to leave, even now that there are no longer any U.S. troops in Afghanistan. And while dealing with one crisis after another here at home, from the raging pandemic to more than a million people without power, in stifling heat in the wake of Hurricane Ida, to the political pushback over Afghanistan. You're hearing a lot of Republicans who are outraged over President Biden's handling of the exit, especially in the so-called Freedom Caucus. Yet they support the former guy, the one who set all of this in motion in the first place. The hypocrisy is off the charts, and it is sickening. And it's, it's not like it's the first time. They're all about criticizing President Joe Biden for leaving Americans and allies behind. I go to bed at night, I wake up during the night, I wake up in the morning thinking about the families that have lost loved ones over there. And in addition, the Americans we left, the allies we abandoned, the Christians that are gonna be murdered, tortured and murdered, and the women and girls. And Louis Gorman back there should come up. But they don't want those allies coming into the United States. Former intel that are telling me people that are being brought in here, there is a significant percentage that are future Boston Marathon bombers because they're not doing adequate vetting. Do you see the ridiculousness in that, right? And what, what's the logic here? So are they allies or are they Boston Marathon bombers? Make up your mind. You're upset because he left the people behind and whatever, and they're bringing, but the, it, the ones that he, when you get them out and bring them over, they're future Boston Marathon bombers? They can't really seem to decide. Makes no sense. And then there is, of course, Kevin McCarthy, who was all in favor of the former guy's plan to withdraw troops from Afghanistan. But now that President Biden has actually done that, he's outraged. We now have Americans stuck in Afghanistan, the Taliban in charge, with mo more weaponry than they've ever had in the past, and a border that is open. It's not even a good actor. And we have and a border that is open. The GOP going after the president for carrying out the deal the former guy cut in the first place. After 20 years of war, Joe Biden, or whoever's telling him what to do nowadays, made the Taliban stronger than ever. So uh, we, you know, like this news network, so we like facts here. Let's remember, it was the previous administration that began the process of negotiating with the Taliban. It was the former guy who secretly planned to meet with the Taliban at Camp David right before the anniversary of 9-11. It was the former guy who signed a peace treaty with the Taliban. Let me, let me tell you, say it again. It was the former guy who signed a peace treaty with the Taliban who bragged about his phone call with the man who now leads the Taliban in Afghanistan, Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, who was released from prison at the request of, wait for it, the Trump administration, whose Secretary of State met with Baradar last fall. So yeah, who was it who made the Taliban stronger? Who was it who made the Taliban stronger? Are you listening to me? Who cut the deals? Who met with? Who had the phone calls? Like I said, in the middle of all of this, the president is dealing with one, of, one crisis after another here at home. More than a million people along the Gulf Coast who survived one of the most powerful storms ever to hit the United States now facing the possibility of weeks, even up to a month without power. The National Weather Service issuing heat advisories, and I can tell you firsthand, summers in Louisiana are brutal, brutally hot and muggy and dangerous. People lining up for food and water.
We're only getting the full picture now of just how bad things are in the wake of Hurricane Ida. Five storm-related deaths reported. The governor of my home state of Louisiana telling people who fled the storm not to come back yet. Don't even come back yet. New Orleans is under a curfew tonight as desperate people are still picking up the pieces. And then there is a destructive effect of the big lie still being felt all across this country with the assault on voting rights, which is nothing less than a plan to give the GOP the power to overturn the next election if they don't like the results. The big lie that fueled one of the darkest days in American history, January 6th. You know, that's when bloodthirsty rioters tried to overthrow our free and fair presidential election. Hunting lawmakers forced to run for their lives, including the vice president. Beating police, American heroes, trying to defend our seat, the seat of our democracy. We all saw what happened on that horrible day. It played out live, much of it. And then we saw the rest of it, the body-worn cameras from police officers, the other video that people recorded happily, now getting them in trouble, indicted. We can never forget what we saw. So it is utterly disgraceful that a United States congressman who was there on that day is not only still spreading the big lie of bogus election fraud, he's talking about taking up arms against his fellow Americans. If our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, then it's, it's going to lead to one place, and that's bloodshed. And I will tell you, as much as I am willing to defend our liberty at all costs, there's nothing that I would dread doing more than having to pick up arms against a fellow American. And the way that we can have recourse against that is if we all passionately demand that we have election security in all 50 states. These people, I mean... No shame, none. Madison Cawthorn doesn't seem to understand that words matter. Words like rigged, stolen, taking up arms against a fellow American. He doesn't seem to understand that those are the kinds of words, the lies, I should say, that fuel the insurrection at the United States Capitol in the first place. Well, uh, maybe he does understand. After all, he was right there at the rally before the Capitol was attacked, right there spewing lies. The Democrats, with all the fraud they have done in this election, the Republicans hiding and not fighting, they are trying to silence your voice. That night, he voted to overturn the election results even after the very real violence and bloodshed that we all saw that day. Can you imagine voting to overturn the election after having witnesses and possibly having your safety and your life jeopardized? Well, their safety was jeopardized, their lives were jeopardized, so not possibly. What, what do you expect from the congressman who just weeks before the violence at the Capitol said this? I'm encouraging you. Please get on the phone, call your congressman, and feel free, you can lightly threaten them and say, say, you know what, if you don't start supporting election integrity, I'm coming after you, Madison Cawthorn's coming after you, everybody's coming after you. You can lightly threaten them. Congressman Cawthorn's spokesman says that he was clearly advocating for violence not to occur when he talked when he talked about having to, to pick up arms against a fellow American. Okay. All right. But words matter. Words that spread lies, the lies that I have said before, are killing us and our democracy. Case in point. Here it is. Remember that school board meeting in Fort Lee County, Florida yesterday, the one where a fistfight broke out over the county's new mask mandate happened, was caught live on television? Well, there is more much more. What happened outside is really nothing in comparison to what went on inside. These are demonic entities in all the school boards of all the United States of America, and all of us Christians will be sticking together to take them all out. Masks don't work. These doctors that sit up here that were sneering at us and looking at us like we're scumbags, they need to go back to medical school. Wow, she used Christian and that word <laughs> in the same breaths. 
Being a Christian is not just saying, I'm a Christian. It's actually abiding by the principles of what being a Christian is supposed to be about. You just can't do whatever you want and say whatever you want and call people talking about and say F words and all that. And then you say, I'm a Christian. I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want to help my fellow person. I don't want to do unto others. I don't want to save other people's lives, but I'm a Christian. Come on, man. Really? <laughs> this just goes to show you how divided America is on every single level. We can't even agree on a simple thing like masks to keep our children safe, the least of these. I'm a Christian. I don't want to keep children safe. My child, my decision. What about that other person's child? Huh?